Hello, we're here with Daniel Povey, and today's question was asked by a user on YouTube. And our first question is, what are your predictions for the future of automatic speech recognition? Hmm. Well, I think the, the main trend is going to be just training bigger models on much more data. Like the, the reason why this GPT and chat GPT became such a big thing is just they just trained a super a big model on super huge data. And I think uh, speech recognition is going the same way. I'm interested in tools that can like uh, align data fast and prepare training data. Uh, something else that I think will grow is a prompted ASR where the input is not just the speech itself, but some kind of text that's like related to the speech in some way, like maybe the slides of a talk or something else that's related. Uh, maybe even pictures in future, but but you know that's some I, that I don't think that's something that anyone's working on right now. Okay, question two: Do you have any advice for young ASR researchers, master's students? Um, well, I suppose the only advice is just try to learn all the basics, like try to learn Python thoroughly, try to learn the interface between Python and C++, learn C++, you know, properly understand what's going on and things like PyTorch in instead of just knowing how to run it as a script. Okay. Are there any universities or speech groups that you recommend for pursuing a PhD? Uh, this is a tricky question because, because if I mention some groups, then implicitly I'm not mentioning other groups. And like, to be honest, I don't keep very, uh, I don't keep very close track of these kinds of things. I mean, I still work with the group at JHU and they're still a good group. Uh, I'm not really keeping track of what the other groups are doing. Uh, I know in Germany, uh, Hermann Nye's group still seems to be doing good work. And I think that's in Aachen. Uh, and I, I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned certain other, there's lots of other good groups, but I'm, I, I can't really list them. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about JAX as a toolkit for deep learning, especially regarding the support of TPUs? Mm, okay, well, firstly, I'm not like super hot on TPUs. Like they're a great thing and everything. But the problem is there, there's something that just Google has, and I don't believe they're selling the hardware. I think they're just enabling them in the Google Cloud. So like it really limits how useful it is. Uh, now, I I do like the uh, I do like the principle of Jax. It it's like a way of building up matrix operations and tensor operations from like clean fundamentals and enable enabling compiling that into executable code. That's my understanding of what it is. Uh, I mean, it's very nice. I haven't really had the time or the the uh, or the occasion to go to understand it deeply. Uh, but but because uh, we we need our stuff to run on like on Nvidia GPUs, but also on other hardware, we're mostly using just uh, CUDA and things like PyTorch, and also we use things like Onyx and NCNN for uh, deployment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That was Daniel Povey.